So what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing the second exercise of memory management. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing they ask us is what is memory, ma memory management in the inverted page table if each entry in this table is four bytes? So let's go ahead and look at how a page table works, right? An inverted page table works. So we copy this. Let me just, uh, just take this, duplicate it, and move it to the other side. I oh, already have it here, yeah. Dumb. So, as you can see in this side, we have it inverted. Instead of having the, oops, instead of having the virtual memory on the left, we have the physical memory on the left. And what we do here is uh, we do an inverted page table. So the inverted page table, what it does is it tells us which frame is assigned to which page rather than which page is assigned to each frame. So, so. Coming back to it, if we look at the page table and we want to see how it looks, we're going to have the following. Instead of having two, uh, uh, two sections, two attributes, we're going to have three in this case. In this case, we're going to have PID, which is, stands for program ID. We're going to have our frame and our page. In this case, what we're going to do is, let's say we have a process, right? Let's have a process. That's, uh, I don't know, imagine the PID of the process is 1302. It has the frame two, right? This goes here. And then it's like, okay, um, we have 31002 and the frame is two. Which page do we have? Oh, we have the page four. So the page is going to be assigned to page four. This is page four, right? So in a sense, we're doing the opposite, the inverted, the inversion of this uh, operation. Rather than um, the finding which page is assigned to which frame, right? We're doing the same thing, rather than finding which frame is assigned to which page. And it's important to notice that we have a PID, which is process ID, the frame, and the page, right? Uh, normally speaking, uh, this is also known as a, as a virtual page number and the, uh, the physical page number. So we can also write this as PPN, physical page number, and P, uh, how was it called? P, no, VPN, sorry, virtual page number. Not, do not get confused on the VPN as virtual private network. It's not, not, not a totally different topic. So now we have the theory, right? So they're asking us now, how much, what is the memory requirement of an inverted page table if each entry in this table is four bytes, right? And why? Well, if we have this, we have this, right? And we basically know that the page size is of ten, ten, 2 to the 10 bytes, right? That means each frame size is going to be the same. So instead of taking, you know, the virtual memory space, we're going to take basically the physical memory space. So we're gonna only divide physical memory space by the size of each page. So in this case, it's two to the 31 over two to the 10. That's gonna result us in two to the 21, right? And they are telling us, yeah, we have four bytes for each. We have four bytes for each entry. So that means we have to multiply this by four. Why? Because this is the number of pages, so, or frames, so to speak, you know? Frames, because this is not pages no more. So we multiply 2 to the 21, so 2 to the 21 times 2 squared is going to be 2 to the 23. And that's going to be bytes, right? And that's going to be the answer. So this is the answer for A. We need 2 to the 23 bytes to run this, to have this. And they're asking us now, how many processes, how many processes can concurrently run in the system, Assum assuming there's a single inverted page table for all processes. That's another a, th a thing that you have to also remember. Inverted page tables uh, aren't singular. For example, over here, if we have one, if we imagine we have Photoshop running, and we have, I don't know here, Chrome, right? Chrome. If we have two different processes, they're gonna have each their own page table. That means we're gonna have one page table for, for Photoshop, and we're going to have another page table for Chrome, right? And then they just go here and they go here, right? However, when it comes to like actual 
the inverted page table, we only have a single, a singular page, uh, inverted page table for the whole system. That means all processes are also stored here. We never go around and, and divide our, our, our inverted page table. We only have a singular one. So again, the inverted page table size is limited by the how much RAM we have, how much physical memory we have. So yeah, uh, given this, now they're asking us, well, obviously we gotta go back to the question because I forgot what it was. How many programs can we run this, right? How many programs can we run? Well, it, it's, it just su suffices by taking, hey, if each entry is two to the 10, and I have two, two to the 21 frames, I technically have two to the 21 frames available for each process, right? For like each frame can be, ta can be taken by one process. So if each, if each process, right, only takes one frame, then we can have up to two to a 21. Oof. Oh gosh, sorry about that. Processes. And that pretty much is the gist of the idea. If each process takes only one frame, then we can have up to two to 21 processes. And so we have solved uh, the inverted page table exercise. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, I'll see you in the next video to do 2.3. And yeah, let's go.